Hi, I'm Missy with Elm William Street, and we are here to help you become a more confident quilter from the piecing to the quilting and everything in between. We are here to walk you through some tips and tricks to put together our razzmatazz pattern. So the first thing you're going to need to do to sew along with this is head to our shop and grab your copy of Razzmatazz. All of the instructions are going to be included in the pattern. So the fabric requirements that you need, the cutting instructions, all of the templates, everything is going to be in the pattern. So make sure that you grab your copy so that you can sew along with us. And the first thing that I'm going to walk you through is cutting out the templates. Since Razzmatazz does use some larger template pieces, I want to show you some tricks of what I do to cut out those larger template pieces. So don't worry about making sure you have all your fabric cut out before you start. So the first thing that we're going to do on this quilt pattern is we need to make sure we've got all of the templates printed out. Because of the size of the templates for this pattern, it's going to go together really quick and easy, but we do need to make sure that we take a couple of extra steps in the templates themselves. So after you've got the templates printed out, before you cut them out, make sure you're lining them up and taping them together. And the reason I say before you cut them out is because not only do you want to line up the lines on the template itself, but you want to line up the lines on the paper. Um, for each of those templates. So make sure you refer to our diagram for laying out your templates, tape them together. I like to tape them on both sides, just helps make them a little sturdier. And then we need to uh, cut everything out. So typically when we use, when we do a pattern with templates, I tend to cut the templates out in chipboard just because it gives me something that's a little sturdier than just paper. But because, again, because of the size of this, I don't really have pieces of chipboard that are big enough and I'd have to be taping chipboard together and everything. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use the paper templates for this. But I wanna show you a couple of tricks that you can use to help make sure that you're getting your templates cut out correctly. So one is to just refer to it just like a clothing sewing pattern. So grab your pins, Go ahead and throw a couple in here to help hold your template in place. And then you can use your ruler and your rotary cutter to cut along that. Or you could just get your scissors and cut right along that just like what you would on a sewing pattern. The other option that I like to use is, is some type of weight. So these are, these are actually magnets. It's a little um, bit of, they're small tile pieces that were left over from a house project years ago, but I've turned them into magnets, but it adds a little bit of weight. There's also lots of other things that you can use to weigh down patterns. I know people use um, a lot of different things that you can find in the hardware store. This seems to work. So just this just kind of helps hold it. It's not like really heavy, but it's gonna help hold things in place a little bit as you're going around the pieces. So the other thing that I really like to use for some of these pieces is a smaller rotary cutter. So we use our big rotary cutter for a lot of things, but when I'm doing a lot of template cutting, I like to use my smaller one. It just, the 28 millimeter versus a 45, it's, it, I feel like it gives me more precision. It could be a personal thing, it, it just works for me, so find what works for you, but it, I do feel like it gives me a little bit more precision. Now along this long piece though, I'm going to go ahead and use my larger rotary cutter and I'm going to use my ruler to help get that really nice straight line. Because we've got our weights in, um, in here to help hold our pattern down, I'm actually going to put the ruler right along the side of the pattern and then cut it out. So sorry, I'm with filming, I'm a little bit of an odd angle, so bear with me. So that's going to get that, that first cut all the way through and make sure we actually went all the way through. Looks like there's a little spot that got missed before you pull your pattern off, before you pull your fabric away. Okay, so now you're gonna be working with a smaller piece. And again, like I said, when it's these smaller areas, I really like to use my smaller rotary cutter. I just feel like it gives me better precision. So for this, I'm just going to use my fingers to kind of hold down that because these are just going to kind of get in the way with what I'm trying to do here. 
So just hold it down and just go right along your template. And again, we're going to just use the ruler on this side and I'm probably going to use my rotary up along this edge as well because it's got a slight curve to it. So I can't use my ruler. So when I can't use my ruler, I'm definitely going to use my smaller rotary cutter. But those will just kind of give you some ideas, some suggestions as you're cutting out your templates before you get ready to sew this pattern together. Okay, now that all of our templates are cut, we are ready to start sewing these pieces together. So the first thing you're going to start with is you're going to need your medium, um, sorry, your white template C pieces. We're going to sew those to the bottom of the medium turquoise template B pieces. So these should line up nicely right across that bottom. You do have a very, very slight curve on these, so we're going to pin these together just like what we just like we would a typical curve. The only difference is I'm not necessarily creasing that center point just because the size of the piece is, is small enough that it's not really necessary. So if you would prefer to crease that center point and start there, um, absolutely go ahead and do that. But I'm just going to go ahead and pin each side. And again, when you're pinning your when you're pinning curves, you want to make sure that your sides are lining up a little further down um, past that seam allowance just to help keep things nice and nice and flat. And then this should just line up really nicely because of the size. I'm going to throw one more pin in the center just to kind of help keep that slight curve in place. And then we're going to go ahead and sew a quarter of an inch seam. So again, we're going to be sewing the white template C to the bottom of the medium turquoise template B pieces. So you should end up with eight strips when you're finished. Okay, so when pressing this, again, this is going to be one of those instances where you're not going to press to the light side. You're actually, you are actually are going to press to the dark side. So we want to make sure that we're pressing this seam up. It's going to lay definitely a little bit flatter when you're pressing to the top part of the curve than it would if you're pressing to the bottom part of the curve. So make sure you're pressing that seam up when you do that. To our template D pieces. So you're going to have a total of 12 of these pieces of two different colors. So you'll, this, you'll just follow the same process for all of them. And then we're going to also need our template E white pieces. And again, we're going to do just the same process. We are sewing a very, very slight curve. And this one is going to be E is going to be sitting on the top of D. So in this case, because it is the top of the curve and it is a little bit bigger area, I do want to make sure that I crease that center point so that I can get it to line up nicely. So you're going to fold both pieces in half and just do a finger press in that center. So we can then just line those up. They're just going to sit right there in the groove. Stick a pin in there and then when we line up the sides, make sure you're kind of manipulating a little bit so you get it nice straight down the side. And then I'm just going to throw one more pin in the center of each of these just to help hold it in place a little bit easier for me. So this pattern really is a great intro to curves pattern if you're not familiar with curves or you've always been a little bit afraid of curves because the curves are very, very slight until we get to the very um, end of the piece. It's a really good way to start that out. So these are the pieces where I am going to break that rule and I'm going to press instead of to the dark side, I'm actually going to press to the light side just because I find that pressing um, curves to the outer curve just gives you a nice flatter press. Okay, now that we've got all of our strips sewn with the whites on the tops or the bottoms that are needed, we're going to go ahead and start working on assembling the block itself. So we're going to start off with that medium turquoise that we've got the white strip on the bottom. We're going to follow that with the, what, the light turquoise with the white strip on the top and see how they line up just nicely across both the top and on the bottom. 
So we're going to sew those two to each other. And then we're just going to continue with our curve as we sew the remaining pieces. So we're going to then get another medium turquoise with the white at the bottom. Let me see if I can zoom this out a little bit more. The nice thing about this, this quilt is we are making some nice big blocks. So sewing that final curve is going to be easier. Now let's see if we can, we're going to go with the, then we're going to add the red strip with the white across the top. We're going to add our dark blue strip. Now this one doesn't have any white on it. This is just um, the full strip out of the fabric. And then we're going to end with one more red strip and we're running out of space on the table um, with the, the white across the top. So this is going to give us a nice arch and this is going to be the one of the blocks. So we're going to go ahead and get this arch sewn together and then we'll sew some, some circles to the top and bottom of the arch. So we've got our nice big arch all put together. This is going to be a quarter of our circle. Now we're going to go ahead and get the rest of the square put together. So, okay, so now that we've got our arch all put together, all of our strips pieced to each other, we're ready to go ahead and finish adding the rest of our, our curved piece to turn this into a square. One thing just that I want to note on the arch itself, and this is really just a preference, but I did go ahead and I pressed all of the seams going the same direction. That way I just know what direction everything is going when I'm sewing the additional pieces to it and I don't end up with a seam getting twisted underneath, which after you've washed it the quilt a few times, you probably would never even notice, but just something that, that I wanted to make sure I didn't have that, that, those seams folded over. So we're gonna sew this together just like we, we would any other curved piece. We're gonna fold this in half and give it a good finger press. And then for this piece, we actually don't have to fold that and have a finger press because this is going to be our center right here. This seam is going to be our center. So we can go ahead and just lay that there, let it nest right there in that seam and add a pin and then go ahead and just like all of our other curved pieces, we're going to match up each of the sides and kind of get this to nestle in nicely. So pin up one on each side first. Make sure that you're lining your sides up so that they stay nice and straight. That will help make sure that your finished piece is also nice and straight coming out the other way. And then I just have to stretch this a little bit to kind of work this in. And I'm going to go ahead and put a pin in each of these seams because I don't want the seam to pop open too badly on me with the little bit of stretch that you that you have to do with this being a curved piece. I want to keep those seams from popping. So just watch that as you're, you're stretching that to make it fit. Just make sure you're not popping your seams. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and sew a quarter of an inch seam all the way across. Okay, now we've got our, our blue piece attached. We're going to go ahead and finish the inside of this curve using our white template H piece. So again, we're just going to fold this in half, give it a good finger press, fold this in half. And if you want to fold it in half before you sew it to the piece, 
might be a little bit easier to get that in half without adding all of the additional bulk of this block with you. Just make sure when you're ironing it, don't iron the finger press on the bottom, and then you'll already be set to go on this piece. And then we're going to go ahead and line these up. Let that nest right in there. And then attach our sides, and I'll probably throw a, a pin in the center as well, just to kind of help hold this in place. Now that you're getting to a slightly smaller curve than what we've been doing, I always like to make sure that I am sewing with my needle down. That just helps me so keep the fabric in place so that I can easily lift up the, the pressure foot, kind of readjust the fabric if I need to to make sure I'm not getting any tucks in there, but my needle is going to stay right where it needs to be, so I'm going to be able to pick right back up where I need to to continue that seam. And this is going to be the smallest curve you will need to deal with for this quilt. Okay, we've got everything ready to go. We're going to go ahead and sew our quarter of an inch seam along this line. Okay, we have our square all finished. It's nice and big. You can get the finished size of this block inside the quilt pattern. And now you're just going to go ahead and repeat that exact same process for three additional squares. After you've got that, um, after you have all of them completed, it's really simple after that. You're going to sew the four squares together to make one large circle. And then you're going to be ready for your borders. Now, if you have any questions on how, on the best way to attach borders, we have another YouTube video that goes over borders in detail, and we'll go ahead and link that here for you so that you can find it easily. So just a reminder, you do need to make sure that you have a copy of the Razzmatazz quilt pattern to sew along with the videos that we've just gone over. So make sure you head over to our shop if you haven't already and grab your copy. And while you're there, check out the other fun projects that we've got going on to add to your queue and happy quilting.